Researchers here at Stanford University believe we'll soon be interacting with each other on the computer via avatars. These are digital representations of you and me in the virtual world. Already, there are computer games where players interact via avatars. Hey guys, welcome back. Hey everybody. You can sit at home and meet your friends in virtual reality to chat, even gesture to each other. Face recognition, body tracking, now even facial expressions. Microsoft has released a product called Avatar Connect, where you socialize with other avatars, but those avatars are mimicking your gestures and they're capturing your facial expressions. Your smile, your laugh, and even the raise of your eyebrows. What it does is it takes this social networking that we love so much with devices like Facebook and puts an avatar layer on it, an avatar that moves like you do. All coming to your living room. And in the future, it won't be just living room games. More and more of our interactions could be through avatars. For about an hour a day, kids are spending time inside of an avatar in the United States. To put that in perspective, they read print for about 38 minutes a day. So the avatar is becoming the medium of the future. That means the environment of the future will be virtual reality. What are the psychological consequences of spending more time in worlds like these than in actual reality? That's what this lab is dedicated to answering. Remarkably, they've found our brains are easily fooled when it comes to reality. So, Graham, we're going to have you walk the virtual pit. In order for you to do yeah. that, we're going to need to track your ankles. So I'm going to have these two ankle sensors that I'm going to have okay. you attach. Uh, do you, is that okay with you? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Your ankle. The infrared so sensors yeah. are tracked oh, by eight sensors. cameras around the ceiling. So my feet are precisely followed for the virtual world. So I've got to walk the plank. So we're going to have you walk the virtual plank. All right. Okay. I should try that in real life. It looks pretty easy in real life. Yeah, there's no actual pit in this room, so try so to remind could, yourself. Oh, yeah, this is very easy to do. But then the weird part happened. The virtual reality goggles took me into a reality that wasn't that different. In fact, it appears to be a room that's pretty much exactly the same as this room. Yes, so this is an exact rendering of this room that we yeah. built from the AutoCAD blueprints. And that was a key to the illusion I was about to experience, because my brain had already accepted the actual room as real. All right, next we're gonna open the floor. It looks, uh, it looks like the real room. <laughs> and now we've changed something. So we've actually opened up the floor of the room to see a virtual pit. Uh, you've got a dungeon here, I see. Correct. <laughs> How do you feel? Whoa. Uh, yeah, look, it's quite realistic, actually. It, it does feel a little imposing. I've got to walk across this blank. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know, what is that, a 20 meter drop either side? Correct, yeah. And now I'm going to ask you to take a step off into the pit to see what happens. All right. Whoa. I got you. I actually feel like this is a slightly scary thing to do. So take a step into the pit. Yeah, just remind yourself there's a physical room, right? So there's no actual pit there. <laughs> oh, I'm down here now. <laughs> Where are you? All up there? <laughs> your heart starts beating. You know intellectually that this is just the virtual world, that you're in a room, that you can't get hurt, but your body does not know that. Your brain is sending it all these signals. Do not cross the chasm on a plank, be careful. I was beamed into a classroom of students with very natural body movements, but who just stared at me. <laughs> Hello. Oh, so when I, they riot, they track around with me. <laughs> it's like some surreal sci-fi movie. That continual eye contact may be freaky, but it's the key, along with the virtual mirror back there. I didn't even see you out the back. Hello. To giving this world an extra level of reality. It is a powerful psychological experience, and we say it's rooted in your back brain, meaning uh, it's a response that even when you know up front in your high-level cognition areas, you know it's not real, uh, your back brain wins this debate. But back to our question. How do these virtual worlds affect me? One finding that uh, is very inherent throughout our over a decade of research on this is that things that happen in the virtual world are not free. So when you have a virtual experience, uh, it can profoundly affect you outside of virtual reality, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. The bad effects of video games are well studied. So Jeremy's lab decided to look at the possible good effects. Can human behavior be changed for the better using avatars. 
So if I build an avatar that looks just like you and then show you your avatar getting healthy and your avatar losing weight as a function of exercise, when you leave the virtual world, that profound experience changes the way that you think about your own health and you'll actually behave more healthier. Rather than healthier, today I'm going to be taught to conserve energy by taking quicker showers. I watch my poor avatar eat coal, consuming an amount equivalent to the electricity used to heat my shower. Yeah, that other Graham's not enjoying the task, I don't think. When people use this virtual shower, afterwards in the real world, they do tend to take shorter showers. In another study, people were given a superpower, the ability to fly and save a sick child. This sounds like a job for Superman. After their heroic efforts in the virtual world, the volunteers were exposed to a faked up calamity in the real world. When they leave virtual reality, there's a crisis. A woman out in the other room has a crisis and we measure how thoroughly and how quickly they help that woman. Remarkably, spend even a short time in this world and you'll give that woman better assistance. Having a virtual experience where you fly like Superman and help save a child's life, that makes you more helpful in the real world. But one of the downsides of virtual reality is it can be a bit too real. Take this beautiful place. Just take a moment to look around. You can check out the fish. There's a shark there. I was there. Say, I saw a shark up there. shark as he circles around you. Assume he won't give me a little nip. Yeah, he's been programmed to be pretty nice. So. Don't even worry. Oh, hey, the shark's just giving me a whack. <laughs> now, I'm swimming with a shark. But in a previous study, kids swam with virtual whales, and the results were disturbing. A week later, we bring back those same children, and we ask them, hey, have you ever been to uh, SeaWorld, which is an amusement park in the United States, uh, and swam around with whales? 50% of our children formed false memories, meaning they thought the virtual experience was something that had actually happened to them in physical life. We have something called source amnesia. We may remember the content of something, but we don't remember how we found out. But one of the biggest dangers of virtual reality is it will be so alluring. You won't want to unplug. And so virtual life and internet life is so much more preferable to real life because in real life you have to negotiate with real people who may not say what you want and the, the rules aren't always so clear and this, it's a little unstructured. With virtual reality starting to hit living rooms now, we'll find out sooner rather than later where this technology will lead us.